There's no mystery, it's no secret, that the future of Bolivia rests with the health and education of its children. Every parent in Bolivia knows this. Their hopes for their children are the same as parents everywhere. The Bolivian government has made school attendance compulsory for children ages 7 to 14, yet one in five children in rural Bolivia never goes to school and three drop out by the third grade, especially girls. Children are needed to work in the fields and to take care of siblings. Children whose language is Quechua or Aymara are discouraged by teachers who know only Spanish and by school buildings that lack desks and chairs and provide little shelter against rain and cold. Parents are disheartened by the high turnover among teachers, many from the city. Hatun Casa is a tiny village in central Bolivia. It sits on a ridge in the rugged Andes Mountains at an altitude of over 11,000 feet. The village is the center of communal life for some 40 families. All are subsistence farmers. They all grow potatoes. To get to school in Hatun Casa, many children hike steep, rocky paths for hours, morning and night. For 10 years, the people of Hatun Casa asked the local government for a new school. A school with doors to keep out cold winter winds, glass in its windows, a roof that did not leak, and a real bathroom with doors. Frustrated, the community appealed for help to Mano Amano. Mano Amano agreed to contribute a team of builders, construction materials, and classroom equipment. As in other Mano Amano projects, the local government contributed some financing and the community contributed labor. In 2009, the community celebrated construction of six classrooms, an office for the director, a public bathroom, and a cement platform for recreation and community gatherings. Hatun Casa was Mano a Mano's 36th school project. Abel Ramirez, the community leader of Hatun Casa, describes the new buildings as the heart of the community. School director Ruben Darío says, conditions are immeasurably better teachers can now teach, the quality of education has distinctly improved. Eighth grade teacher Filemon Mamani says, for the first time, we have adequate space for classes. We have desks and chairs, tile floors, blackboards, bathrooms, a playground for the children. Marta Yanke, who teaches sixth grade, says, we have the space we need. We no longer have to take turns using classrooms. The local government later funded a roof over the playground to shelter students from the weather. Before the new classrooms, six students living too far to walk each day boarded with villagers. Now the old classrooms have become an unofficial dormitory for 20 students ages 8 to 13 who live three or more hours from school. With the encouragement of their parents, they walk to school on Monday, carrying a week's supply of potatoes. They gather their own firewood and cook their own food. They return home on Friday. As an integral part of the Hatun Casa project, Mano a Mano also built four units of teacher housing. In rural Bolivia, there is a shortage of teachers. Although the government, to address the shortage, requires each new teacher to teach for two years in the country, many teachers are unwilling to work in rural Bolivia without running water or electricity and where they are away from their families for weeks at a time. Many teachers who begin teaching in rural Bolivia find the conditions unbearable and soon leave. Jose Velasquez, the director of Mano a Mano Bolivia, says, people ask us, why does Mano a Mano build housing for teachers? We say, without adequate housing, what motivation do teachers have to teach, to work, to stay in the community? 
Teachers are entitled to live with dignity. Before he became school director at Hatun Casa, Ruben Darío taught in a remote community where the single classroom was also where he lived. He had no electricity, no plumbing, a straw roof. He remembers waking one night to find a tarantula on his chest. Teacher Malmani describes his housing in Hatun Casa before Mano a Mano, a single room that served as bedroom, kitchen, everything, shared with spiders, snakes, and rats. When it rained outside, it rained inside. Now, he says, the teachers in Hatun Casa have the best housing in the region. Each unit has two bedrooms, a kitchen, and a shared bathroom. The housing is the reason he and other teachers have stayed in Hatun Casa. His wife now lives with him. Their five-year-old son is a student in the school. Another teacher's wife has moved to Hatun Casa from Potosi, where she was living with their two daughters. Now the family lives together. The older daughter is a student in the school. Marta Yanke says, we are happy that we have not been forgotten here in Hatun Casa. Trabajamos con ganas. We love working here. Sí.